What is going on, everyone? Yesterday, the verbal NDA for the Ashes of Creation Alpha was released, and I'm doing a little bit different of a video today, and I'm gonna talk about my experiences in the Alpha, unscripted, just going through step-by-step, day-by-day, what I experienced, what I liked, what I didn't like, and all of that. But before we get started, if you guys have any questions, on Alpha One, feel free to drop them in the comments down below because I cannot share footage right now, but I can answer your questions. I can talk about anything that I played with. There is no, nothing holding me back. Also, stay tuned, hit that subscribe button because there's gonna be a lot more of these type of videos to come. A lot more Ashes gameplay and all that once the NDA is officially completely released. So stay tuned. First thing I did was obviously the starting area in the character creator. You go in, you make your character. It's very basic, it's alpha. I'm gonna say that a hundred times in this video. It is alpha. This is not final. This is not the final game. And some of these things may not even exist anymore when the game finally comes out. But in the character creator, you got the Dunir Dwarf, you got the Empyrean Elf, the Kalar and the Veiloon Humans. The Kalar Humans are a bit taller. The Veiloon Humans are the shorter, skinnier guys. I was kind of curious to see what the difference between these two were. I know the Veiloon tend to live in the desert and the Kalar are more of these high society humans. So I was curious to see how they're gonna represent these in the game. Anyways, for classes, you had the Cleric, you had the Tank and the Mage available. I played the Cleric and the Mage. Cleric mostly because it was the most Paladin type character and I normally play a Paladin in MMOs. Not much going on here. The character models look great. The hairstyles look great. Everything in it, although it was very minimal right now, looks awesome and I can't wait to see how far they take this character customization because there is a lot they can do with it and it looks fantastic. I know a lot of people had complaints originally in some of the gameplay that the dwarves are these two skinny, not very dwarfy looking guys, but I didn't see that in the character creator. They looked a lot more muscular. I don't know if they're listening to feedback or it's just how the gameplay played out or the type of character they're making, but I like the look of the dwarves a lot and I did play a dwarf on my cleric and I played a Empyrean elf for my mage. But anyways, once you jump through the portal and you get into the game, the game looks absolutely amazing. This game is only alpha one. It hasn't gone through all the polish phases and it's gorgeous. Everything about it is gorgeous. Like I really enjoyed the snowy mountain type environments in the starting area with the snow flurs going on. And I can't wait to see this more down the road with the seasons that are brought into it. But the snowy area was short and it quickly expanded into a more grassy and forest type area. But we'll talk about the world a little bit more in a minute. Anyway, starting out, there's your basic quests of welcome to Vera, go talk to this guy, go talk to that guy. All the quest givers are green, but also a lot of the players were green so I didn't really like that. I'm hoping they change up the colors a bit. I'm sure they will. Again, it's alpha. They are here to listen to this feedback, to listen to everybody who's played feedback and everybody in the community. Day one, I'm going through. I'm just excited to be in the game. I missed out on some quests. I didn't really realize that the different conversations with the same NPC gave different quests. I thought it was just different dialogue to mix it up, but I also didn't read the text that much. I was too excited to just get into the gameplay. There is a bit of variety in the quest. You go and kill some NPCs, scout out some areas, Areas, gather supplies and bring them to other NPCs, leading to more quests. And then there's a crafting one, which was bugged. You couldn't actually equip the weapon you crafted, but I had you send out gathering resources such as stone and wood, and then creating a sword. Crafting as a whole was a bit touchy, so I didn't deal with that. I read a lot that it was buggy, it didn't work most of the time, but again, it's alpha, and it's a very basic crafting, it's not what you're going to see in the final game. Then, there was a quest in the cave that required a bit of thinking on gathering certain items. It involved jumping puzzles that were not very challenging, but it made you stop and think for a minute to think about, alright, how exactly am I going to get to this item? The big thing is it was great seeing this area filled with people. There must have been 100 plus players in the starting area when I started on day one. The game still still ran roughly at 70 to 80 frames per second for me. There was very little lag. Every once in a while, there's some stuttering, but nothing major. And I was playing on ultra settings on 2K monitors. During this time, I spent a lot more time exploring and taking in the world
world and learning my class. And other than that, this starting area was pretty basic, which is expected to be, again, it's alpha. Like I said, I'm gonna keep saying that, it is alpha. I didn't really have expectations for this. And obviously come launch, there'll be multiple areas with different settings, different quests, different themes, different races driven around it, different stories. None of that was in here. It's just to get you into the game and start learning some of the very basic functions in here. Eventually, you get a quest to go scout out three areas, which will eventually become nodes. A forest node called Winstead, which is closest to the starting area. Then there was a desert node and a wetlands node, which the names I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But the forest node was great. It really, the area really felt alive. There's various NPCs and creatures and a lot to explore. There's a couple dungeons in the area. There's a dragon in the area. There was rivers. There was all this flowers and plants and it just felt full. It felt alive. The desert and the wetlands nodes again had the dungeons and such, but they didn't quite feel complete to me, which is okay. Again, alpha. Also, the desert didn't really feel much of a desert. It was more like Westfall and WoW. It was a plains type feel with dead grass everywhere and it felt like there should be farmlands popping up here and there. It was not the sandy dry area that I was expecting when I first saw the name desert. But again, alpha is alpha and we have seen true concept art of desert, which we'll get into down the road. But my favorite part about this quest though is the nodes were non-existent starting out. Still at the wilderness stage, there was nothing there. There's some NPC enemies there, like some deer and some birds and some other things. And then you head back to turn in the quest. After a while, all these people were questing and contributing XP to these nodes. And then boom, a notification popped up on the screen <clears throat> saying that Winstead reaches stage one, the encampment. But I was too distracted by just exploring that I kind of forgot to check it out, which was okay. But the server issue started with the bad rubber banding. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically you move your character and it bounces back to the spot it was originally in. And eventually this got to the point that it was almost unplayable if moving around, but you still got to sit there and soak in the scenery, which was okay. This is what I expected from the alpha. This type of bugs, a bit more unfinished and glitchy, but Intrepid acted fast to resolve these issues. This resulted in a patch when the servers went down that night and a character wipe. So day two, we started fresh. I made the exact same character, discovered some more quests, and Steven even reduced the XP cap on the node so they leveled quicker. But the game really hit me when I'm doing that quest again, scouting the nodes, and this time I hit that once empty field where I was scouting the day before, and there stood a stage two encampment node with walls built around it, a small town coming to life inside. And again, this is alpha, so it wasn't perfect. There's some terrain bugs and paths that led to nowhere. And all the nodes that came along, they were the same layouts or the same architecture. There's no coastal nodes or mountain nodes yet. They were just the very basic, just the core features of the node. But it's still really cool to see something that was just concept four years ago come to life and even in alpha form, seeing the world start to take shape and change. Then I went to explore some empty nodes again. Then I headed back to turn in the quest and then headed back to Winstead to check out more of this node that I talked about. And then I walked into the center of it, started talking to some vendors and bam, got teleported out. By this, I was a bit confused. I was a little thrown off. I didn't know if this was a bug or something else. But when the loading screen went away, there was a few of us standing around on a hill near the node. So I headed back toward it, and again, I realized this is how the node leveled up. It teleported us out of the area so we wouldn't be bugged into some of the architecture that formed, and the node had leveled to stage three, being the town stage, granting a stable master to buy mounts, the ability to buy houses for 1,500 gold, plus some armor sets from a vendor that weren't in the stage two node. This honestly was the coolest thing that I've experienced in a game in a while. It was very basic, but still awesome to be hearing about the node progression for years and finally being able to see it come to life. At this point, I just wanted a mount. The world felt so vast and so big without a mount. Like running from point A to point B, it like it felt like it was taking a while, but at the same time, it wasn't a boring trek. I didn't feel like it was frustrating to just run from point A to point B. It was kind of fun. Everything was cool to look at and it was brand new seeing everything. So it was pretty awesome. I did end up selling everything in my inventory so I could buy a mount for I think it was like 80 gold. And then I took hopped on that mount and I headed as far north as I could go. And there was a little like ferry type thing that teleported you to the other side of the ocean where you had the tropical biome that we've seen in the live stream lately. From here, the node development seemed to take a toll on the server as this is when the rubber banding started again as you were closer to the node and the starting area. But there wasn't really an issue with this until the node hit stage three. And 
once again, Intrepid was already on it. At this point, I had escaped to the tropical area, so the performance was much better that far out from the node because it's basically the other side of the map. In this area, it was definitely a bit more unfinished. There was less quests, but there was goblins, trolls, spiders, dragons, raptors, all sorts of creatures were in this area, and three nodes that were currently undeveloped and just empty planes. Eventually from here, I found a cool area with basically an unlimited amount of mining nodes spawning, so I stuck there for a while and collected as much as I could to sell back to the vendors to get some new armor and a different mount, but kind of felt trapped here because if I went south, I was going to have to deal with the rubber banding, but in the north, there was no nodes currently, so I couldn't sell my stuff, so I had to wait until the next day when most of this was fixed again via patches and hot fixes that Intrepid did overnight, and I've said this a few times, but like a huge shout out to those guys who I don't think really got any sleep this entire time. They're constantly updating, constantly putting hot fixes out. There wasn't much time between the builds for the amount of work that seemed to be put into this, and they did a great job. They're responding to feedback in Discord. They're just all over the place, and it was great. Day three was the best day out of the testing. The performance was great. The servers were great, and I got to experience a lot more of the actual content in the game. I didn't do any dungeons, but I did run into a guild and did some world bosses. We took down two of them, one being a solo ancient guy who was Cake, the 30-man raid, nuked him in about two minutes. We then headed to the twin ancient bosses that we've seen in the live stream, and these definitely need to be buffed again, because again, a very easy fight for 30 of us. I'm not really sure how many was supposed to be. I feel like I remember Steven saying in the live stream he did that it was a 40-man raid, but at the end, it was very easy. But some of us got killed instantly when these bosses died, and some of us got launched into the air way higher than what I thought was intended, because it you could see the whole map from where these people were. It was pretty great. And from here, we went and headed to the green elder dragon we wiped probably five to ten times on this guy before i had to log off <clears throat> but this guy is like the one steven showed in the siege map video last month where he spits out the purple poison everywhere along with slamming the ground and you have to jump over the ground slam but the poison got overwhelmingly bad at some points and would wipe the raid for the most part the dragon's basic damage didn't hit very hard though so for a while the tanks were able to stay alive and we'd be able to run back and we'd just wipe again and then run back the tanks were still alive but eventually the ground was completely covered in poison and everybody wiped several times i unfortunately didn't get to finish this fight though but it was a very fun fight it definitely needs some tuning again alpha is alpha things aren't perfect Towards the end of night three, the servers got shut down at midnight, but right before then, Steven decided he was going to teleport us all on the server to the Castle Siege area, which wasn't actually in the alpha at all. The only way we could get to it is with Steven teleporting us there, and he maxed everybody out, ran us through. We killed the three dragons, the fire dragon, the frost dragon, and the green elder dragon, which again, he everybody's stats were maxed. It was pretty easy fight. It was still really fun. It was a cool little way to end the whole testing. And then he took us to the castle, which we couldn't get into, but we all stood there. He teleported us back, and then he told us to murder each other. So we all murdered each other, went back to the node. From here, there's like 15 minutes left on the server. So I bought a house because Steven also gave us all like 5,000 gold. So I bought a house. I ran for mayor. I tried to get everybody to vote for me from there, but these servers went down before I could actually win. So I don't know... I'm going to say I won, but yeah, guess we'll never find out. Anyways, that is basically my overall quick summary. Not really quick. This is like a 20 minute video now of my impressions of Alpha 1. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm going to do more videos of these. Now that I'm free to talk about it, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the mage, on the cleric. Eventually, I'll play the tank and I'll give you guys a rundown on what I think about it. But it gives you a little mix up on the channel and you get to hear some new stuff. So again, let me know in the comments what you think. If you have yet to make an Ashes account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.